Despite our best efforts, all horses will contract some sort of ailment or disease during their lifetime. Having a good understanding of the most common horse diseases and ailments is essential for making sure our horses stay healthy for as long as possible. Today, we will be looking at Top 10 Horse Diseases. Before we begin, please like and subscribe to our channel. Number 10. Laminitis. Laminitis is a painful condition of the horse's hooves. It happens when the layers of laminate that connect the hoof wall to the internal structures of the hoof are inflamed. Laminitis affects around 1 in 10 horses worldwide and can occur in ponies and donkeys too. The disease is usually caused by hormonal factors, and many horses with laminitis also suffer from Cushing's disease or equine metabolic syndrome. In the horse world, it is common knowledge that overweight horses are more prone to laminitis as they become insulin-resistant which can trigger the disease. Horses that consume too much grain or spring grass at once can also quickly become laminitic. Equine gastric ulcer syndrome refers to the formation of painful ulcers in the horse's stomach. Also known as gastric ulcer disease, it is a common condition that occurs in 50% to 90% of horses. Number 9. Sweet Itch Sweet itch or summer seasonal recurrent dermatitis is a skin inflammation in horses. It is caused by an allergic reaction to the saliva of female biting midges from the Culicides genus. Sweet itch is a common horse disease in the United Kingdom, where it affects around 5% of horses. Horses suffering from the condition will be itchy along the top line, particularly around the mane and tail. If left untreated, sweet itch can get to the point where the horse rubs itself raw, leaving behind patches of bare skin. If you suspect your horse is affected by sweet itch, consult your vet about the best ways to relieve the irritation. You might want to consider stabling your horse at dawn and dusk, when midges are most active. Insect repellents and fly rugs can also go a long way toward keeping midges away from your horse's body. Number 8. Azopturia slash Tying Up Azopturia, or tying up, is the most common disorder affecting the muscles of the horse. It also goes by the names of recurrent exertional rhabdomyolysis or Monday morning's disease. Tying up essentially refers to the painful cramping of muscles throughout the horse's body. It most often occurs when unfit horses are exercised too intensely or when hard-working horses are rested for a day and then return to work. While some horses only experience one or two episodes, others will suffer from repeated cases. The causes of tying up are not yet fully understood. However, factors that can trigger the diseases include lack of oxygen in the muscles, buildups of lactic acid, and muscle cell death. Depending on the severity, affected horses will show discomfort, stiff gaits, refuse to move, or even lie down in pain. To prevent further episodes, make sure your horse is thoroughly warmed up and cooled down before or after work. The vet might also recommend a diet low in carbohydrates and high in fats to help manage the condition. Number 7. Equine Influenza Equine influenza in horses is a viral infection of the upper respiratory tract that can pass from horse to horse. The first sign is usually a yellow or white discharge coming from the nose, and the horse may develop a high temperature and swollen glands in the throat. Horses most often catch the common cold when they come into contact with other infected horses. This can happen at shows or boarding stables where horses regularly compete. Bad ventilation in stables or trailers can also increase the chances of a horse catching a cold. As this is a contagious disease, it is important to isolate any horses that show signs of common cold. As always, consult your veterinarian about how to best manage the condition. The vet will also be able to tell when your horse is safe to come out of isolation. Number 6. Arthritis Arthritis or degenerative joint disease affects the tissues of the joints and is most common in older horses. Over a horse's working life, excessive wear and tear of the joints can lead to inflammation and damage to the joint structures. The disease is more prevalent in horses that have been in regular hard work throughout their career. While there is no definite cure for arthritis in horses, there are various ways you can reduce the pain and discomfort it causes. Keeping your horse in ideal weight will reduce the load on his joints and help him move more easily. You can also ease the stiffness by turning your horse out as much as possible. Your vet will also prescribe anti-inflammatory medication and may recommend joint supplements. Number 5. Cushing's Disease 
Another common old age condition in horses is Cushing's disease or pituitary pars intermedia dysfunction. Cushing's is caused by a hormonal dysfunction of the pituitary gland at the base of the brain. According to the website Care About Cushing's, one in five horses over the age of 15 will develop the condition. Horses with Cushing's disease will typically have a long and curly coat all year round. They may also display uneven fat distribution, excessive sweating, lethargy, and poor performance. Laminides can also be a sign of Cushing's disease. In fact, over 80% of horses with laminides also suffer from Cushing's disease. While there is currently no way to prevent or cure the disease, horses with Cushing's can live a long and quality life. The condition can be relatively well managed with drugs and good overall care of the horse. Number 4. Desmitis. Desmitis refers to the inflammation of a ligament in the horse's lower legs. It typically affects one of three ligaments, namely the check ligament, the suspensory ligament, and the collateral ligaments in the coffin joint. Although not widely known, desmitis is a common cause of lameness in horses. Depending on the affected ligament, there might be no clinical signs in the early stages of the condition. The symptoms might be as subtle as slight changes in your horse's movement or performance. Because tendons and ligaments are one of the most difficult structures to heal, the treatment for desmitis can last for weeks to months. The vet will likely recommend box rest with regular walking sessions for the first six to eight weeks. Special shoes might also be needed for horses with collateral desmitis. The secret of preventing desmitis lies in your horse having strong ligaments. Number 3. Ringworm. Despite the name, ringworm is actually a fungal infection in horses. The condition causes circular lesions of various sizes, mainly in the saddle, girth, head, and neck regions. Ringworm is highly contagious in horses and owners, must act quickly to prevent an outbreak at the barn. When a horse contracts ringworm, everything in his environment becomes infectious. The bedding should be discarded immediately, and all equipment washed thoroughly using a fungicidal disinfectant. Brushes and tack must not be shared with other horses, or else the infection will spread. A horse with ringworm should be immediately isolated from the others until it reaches full recovery. Luckily, the condition is not serious and can be treated with an antifungal wash. The vet will also suggest clipping the hair around the lesions as hair can also spread the infection. Number 2. Glanders. The other most common bacterial disease of the horse is glanders, which is caused by gram-negative Burkholderia malis and does not produce spore. This bacterial disease is characterized by the numerous ulcerative nodules found in the skin, lung, and upper respiratory tract of the horse. The disease is transmitted by the ingestion of contaminated food and water through discharge from the respiratory tract or ulcerating skin lesion of the carrier animals. There is three forms of glanders like nasal form. The nodules develop in the nasal mucosa, which is degenerative in the deep ulcers. Number 1. Equine Metabolic Syndrome Equine Metabolic Syndrome is a challenging endocrine disorder that affects horses and ponies, leading to insulin dysregulation and metabolic disturbances. Horses with EMS are prone to obesity and regional adiposity, commonly accumulating fat in the crest of the neck and around the tailhead. One of the most concerning complications of EMS is laminitis, a painful and debilitating hoof condition. To manage EMS effectively, careful attention must be given to the horse's diet, with a focus on reducing sugar and carbohydrate intake. Regular exercise is also crucial to maintain a healthy weight and improve insulin sensitivity. Veterinary monitoring and intervention may be necessary to ensure proper management, prevent laminitis episodes, and promote the overall well-being of affected equines. By adopting a proactive approach and following a tailored management plan, horse owners can enhance the quality of life for horses with EMS and minimize the risk of associated health issues. That's a wrap for today's video. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments section below. And make sure to like and subscribe to our channel.